What's going on guys, Walrus here. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for subscribing, and welcome back to episode three of How to Get a Job, a new series that I started because uh, summer is upon us and I get crazy busy. I basically go from uploading two to three times a week to being fortunate if I get you guys one upload a week, and I decided to start the series because I just can't keep up with tips and tricks with new DLC and with gaming related news, but this commentary topic is something that I've got a lot of experience in. It's something that I enjoy talking about, and it's really designed to help you, specifically Specifically, those of you younger guys and girls that are either in high school or just out of high school or in college or just out of college and you're looking to get your first job or advance in the workforce or build your resume. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the practical application of determination and what it means to be proactive and how that can help you beat out some of the candidates that you're competing with in terms of the job that you're trying to get in some cases before your application or your resume is even looked at. Now, for those of you guys that are looking to get caught up with the series, there is a link in the description to episode one and two. And for your convenience, if you're on a desktop PC or Mac, there are annotations in the upper left-hand corner and upper right-hand corner as well to episode one and two. And for those of you guys that are wondering, hey, Walrus, what exactly qualifies you to give advice on employment? Well, I do have a pretty extensive background and quite a bit of experience in many different industries, including the automobile industry, architectural industrial design, the banking industry, the transportation industry, the mortgage industry, industry, mobile phone industry, just to name a few. And on top of that, for the about, for about the last 11 years or so, I've been running a really successful family business. And on top of that, I'm one of the five guys that started the Yoush Network here on YouTube. So I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to employment and getting a job that you want. Just to quickly touch on the gameplay, it's nothing too special, just playing solo domination. And I go through my score streaks a couple of times. If you guys have not tried the score streak setup, it is really, really good. It's the Cell Chopper and the VSAT followed by the escort drone a lot of fun to use I recommend that you give it a try so enjoy that in the background earlier I mentioned a fundamental characteristic determination and in life it's important to recognize that if you want something possessing or being willing to possess this characteristic is key I'm going to give you guys an example of how determination can be applied in a practical manner when it comes to the hiring process but please keep in mind the series is linear and I'm covering each subject and topic in sequence now we have not yet gone over how to fill out an application or put together a great looking resume or even what to expect and how to perform in an interview. Those videos will be coming soon. Now as far as this example goes, it deals with what you need to be prepared to do after you hand in or submit your application in person or online, and that is being proactive, taking the initiative, and being responsible for advancing into your desired position. In another word, determined. So exactly what do we need to do to be identified as such? Well simply put, it's called following up. Now some of you guys may have heard that term or even tried it. However, stay with me. I'm sure you're going to get something valuable out of this insight. Now, at the very least, what you should be doing to follow up with your application is making a phone call and asking a few questions a day or two after it's been submitted. In the description of this video, I've actually provided you guys with an example of how a successful follow-up phone call might go. If you want to use that for a script, you can definitely do that. The questions are in there as well as how to respond once you've been given your answers. Now, keep in mind, it's very important that you introduce yourself by your first and last name, that you're polite, and that you're professional, and to make sure that you've got something to write down the information that you're given. Now, if you want to take this a step further and you're looking for a more effective means of following up with your application or your resume, and maybe you've got a personality like me where you're really outgoing and you're tenacious when it comes to taking a hold of a job that you want or anything that you want for that matter, and getting yourself in a situation or a circumstance that you want to be in, then what you can do is follow up in person. Now, that's not not always going to be something that's available to you just because of the way the hiring process works for certain companies. Some companies are just too big for you to follow up in person. In other words, you'll have to follow up with the phone call or via email. If you guys are primarily applying to companies online and you're having a difficult time with that, let me know in the comment section and I've definitely got some tips and tricks that will help you as far as following up um, with those online applications. Now the reason following up in person can be more effective is because in some cases, in most cases, it will put you face to face with the manager or with the person who is going to have an influence on who gets hired. When you show up in person to follow up, it identifies you as eager
eager and proactive. As someone who takes the initiative and responsibility, getting back to our fundamental characteristic as someone who is determined. Now, before I would follow up in person, there were two things that I would make sure to do. Number one was to go to the company's website and do a little bit of research, generate and develop some talking points, learn a little bit about what was going on with the company. And number two was kind of fun. This is something that I would do before I would officially go in looking all sharp business professional and basically inquire about the status of my application or my resume. I would go in as just a customer or as somebody that needed help and I would find an employee there and then basically find out a little bit about their products, a little bit about the services that they offered, a little bit about how they liked their job, the things that they didn't like about their job, what their hiring process was like, if they typically hire from inside the company, in other words, friends and family members of other employees or if they like to do outside hires. I mean, I would basically go in there and get my feet wet so that, you know, I I had a really solid understanding of what was going on and what it was going to be like to work with this company. Now keep in mind you guys, that's not always going to be necessary. I mean, if you're trying to get your first job at McDonald's or Subway or Jamba Juice, you don't really need to do those two things. However, if you are a little bit more serious and you're, you know, three or four jobs into your into your work history and you're looking to leverage that experience and really get a job that's got maybe better hours, higher pay and that you're ex more excited about, then yes, I would definitely advise you to employ those two tactics, do a little bit of research on the company's website and do some reconnaissance in, per in person. Go in, ask a couple of questions, and you'll find that not only does that give you a leg up on the competition, additionally, it is a great learning experience. So once I had done those two things and was ready to follow up in person, the other important factor that I want to point out to you guys is appearance. And I would dress business professional. I would look really sharp. If you don't know what business professional is, then you can see episode two of this series where we discuss the importance of appearance and how it gets you respect and why it's a crucial aspect of leaving a strong, positive impression. I'd like to emphasize that whether you follow up on the phone or in person, your objective is basically the same. You're trying to get them to respond to you in a positive manner and lock down your interview, which is really important because that is your opportunity to sell yourself as the ideal candidate for the job. Now, if you're the type of individual that is uncomfortable when it comes to being put on the spot or you have no idea what to expect when it comes to an interview and how you should respond, then I would strongly recommend that if you're going to follow up in person, wait until you watch my video about the interview process and how you respond, how you perform and what to expect because it could backfire and in some cases on the phone too. It could it could actually backfire if you choose to go in in person and start inquiring about the job even if you start talking with an individual that is either inexperienced that just started working there or that's been working there for a while but that isn't necessarily qualified to answer your questions concerning the job that you're trying to apply for. They might say something along the lines of, hey, hold up real quick, Turbo. Let me go get my manager and he'll answer everything or she'll answer everything that you want to know when it comes to this job. And if they come out, they might put you on the spot and say, what makes you qualified to work here or what makes you think that you're going to be a good candidate for this job. And if you're stuttering and stammering, you've just left a terrible impression with the individual that is ultimately going to make the decision on whether or not you get the job. So be careful with that. Now, the other thing that I want to emphasize you guys is do not make demands and do not be annoying. Be polite, be direct and to the point. And once you get your response, say something along the lines of thank you so much for your time. I'm really looking forward to hearing back from you or thank you so much for that information. I'm really looking forward to working with you in the future. And if, if you do get a response and they give you a day and time on when you should be on when you should expect to be contacted about an interview or about filling the position and that day comes and goes and you don't get a response, then don't be afraid. Don't be timid about following up again on the phone or in person if possible. It's important to remember you guys, this is a learning process. The most effective way that you can learn besides being observant and being diligent is of course to ask questions. And even if you ask that initial question, has the position been filled? And they reply, yes, unfortunately it has flip it on them and say something along the lines of, oh no, that's not unfortunate at all. I'm really happy that you found an individual who you feel will be a good fit for the job. Would you mind telling me if there are any other opportunities that might be opening up in the future? Or could you possibly connect me to a person who would know about that information? I guarantee you, you'll be surprised when you see how many doors open for you as you demonstrate positive, persistent determination. That's it for episode three, you guys. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and share it with your friends and followers on Facebook or Twitter. More videos are on the way for me and there's a couple on the screen that you might have missed enjoy them i'll talk to you guys later thanks again for all your support